Grace, mercy, and peace are yours, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends and our Savior, Jesus. It's already the end of January. Is it a relief to be out of shopping mode, buying mode? You know that crazy, sometimes hectic month that starts on Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, and runs all the way to when I sometimes usually get all my Christmas presents purchased, December 24th, it gets a little crazy, gets a little hectic. Maybe you're not like me and are very organized and get all of your Christmas shopping done well in advance so that you can actually enjoy the days leading up to Christmas. This year wasn't too painful for me, however. I got most of my purchases done pretty early, with the exception of one item that I kind of misguessed the shipment time, but I breathed a sigh of relief when all purchases were made and were done. Now, maybe many of you, possibly with a lot of grandkids in your family, are always in purchase mode, shopping mode with birthdays and confirmations and graduations that never seem to end. As many of you know, you'll be making purchases your entire life. Can't get away from that. And that can be pretty exciting too, right? I mean, you buy something new, you get to enjoy something new. New is good. Well today, this morning, we'd like to talk about a pretty exciting purchase made that you and I were both responsible for. We'll look at the pain involved in that purchase, but also we'll see it as a win-win for everybody involved. So knowing that your life consists of making purchases, I just like to ask a simple question, a simple question, and you can a show of hands, answer this question. How many of you like to shop? Raise your hands if you like to shop. Wow. I saw like five hands. <laughs> and they were all female. Come on, guys. Well, maybe you're hesitant to raise your hand because it all depends, right? When I'm in my house... And I tell my two boys, okay, stop what you're doing, jump in the car, let's go shopping. I mean, they're in the car just like that before I can even think. No, they're not. More like I hear, really? How long is this going to take, Dad? When are we going to get back home? Come on. Or, can't you just buy it online? Amazon, Dad, come on. Free shipping with Prime, get with it. Or... Well, who are we buy, what are we buying presents for? Who are we shopping for? What is this? Or, you know, if I get some new basketball shoes, I'll go right now. Well, it get, becomes a lot easier when you're shopping for yourself or wondering what's in it for me, right? Now, I, I personally don't mind shopping every so often. I enjoy searching for deals, comparing prices, going from store to store, price matching. Uh, haggling a little bit with people before I make a purchase and searching a little bit more. It makes me feel a little good that I can maybe save a few dollars and by searching for a deal sometimes. Now, maybe you enjoy shopping just because you are just a, simply a very generous person who likes to buy gifts for other people. That's great. And you can't wait to see the eyes light up in the face of the person who you gave a gift to when they open it. That's great. Well, as much as shopping and making purchases might be enjoyable at times, they can also be very, very painful. Anyone who follows a budget knows that. You can't just buy whatever you want because not everything you want to buy fits in the budget. And then you get to big, huge purchases at times that come up in your life, like a, a new home or a vehicle you're adding to your family. 
those are big purchases and you kind of get stressed out a little bit because you want to pick the right one that meets the needs of all of your family members it kind of can be kind of stressful kind of painful at times it can be painful when you spend hour upon hour upon hour searching for that right deal waiting and waiting and waiting and then you realize, wow, I just spent a whole lot of time doing that when I could have used that time to do something more fun and beneficial in my life. Or it can be painful when you are finding that great deal, that deal of a lifetime, such a great deal that you not only buy something for somebody else, but then you buy something for yourself too. And then you realize right after that, you both didn't even need that item. Which then leads to buyer's remorse. Why did I do that? And then you open up your January credit card statement. And you're thinking, how in the world did I make that many purchases and spend that much money? Purchases can be very painful at times, but purchases do need to be made. That's part of life. You know, I kind of think that that was the mentality of God back years ago. Despite being painful, a purchase had to be made. It all started out great. God created a beautiful world. He created Adam and Eve, the crown of his creation, so they could enjoy the beautiful world he created. He watched them serve him and live according to his will. And then it happened. Adam and Eve decide to listen to a sales pitch that seemed and, and really was too good to be true. And they bit and jumped on the deal of the day. All it cost them, some bites of fruit and a little trust in a serpent. From then on, God watched every human being, including us, sin and sin, and sin some more, day after day. And as a result, all were destined to die, all were lost, all became slaves to sin and deserved punishment in hell. As a result, a painful purchase had to be made. And God stepped up and made the purchase of all purchases. Listen to how Peter shares that. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed, purchased, bought back from the empty way of life handed down from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. You know, we might feel some pain in making purchases here and there through our lives, but nothing compares to this purchase made by God. What's even worse, God couldn't find us on sale or on the clearance rack or couldn't find us at the thrift store or any other low-scale Part like that. He searched across the whole world, every continent, country, state, and city, and he could not find one thing that came close to what he was looking for, as perfection was needed. And as a result, he had to pay full price. Not in cash, but something much more valuable something much more painful, the lifeblood of his own son, Jesus. And what did he get? Well, he got you and me, at best, damaged goods. With a no returns policy, no refunds possible. Yet that's the purchase that God had to, that he wanted to make to buy back sinful mankind. That is the painful process Jesus 
had to experience to lovingly free us from the bondage of sin. Any common sense observer to this transaction is thinking, that was not a wise purchase. But God's love goes well beyond man's understanding, doesn't it? A purchase had to be made. Yeah, it was a painful one. Yet, it was still a win-win for everyone involved. For us, yeah, it's obvious. Obvious win-win. A life-changing win for us. We went from sinners going to hell to saints headed to heaven. From forsaken individuals to forgiven members of God's family. From living each day without hope to having a sure and blessed hope. From hostility to peace with our Creator God. What a huge win for us. Secondly, it's the win that keeps on winning for us. Every day when we battle the devil and his temptations whether win or lose, we know there is still forgiveness from God. That's God's unconditional love for us. Every day when a sinful world tries to get us down and bring sadness, doom and gloom into our lives, God is right there to pick us up with another promise and assures us of hope and deliverance. What did it cost us? Not a cent. Nothing. It's definitely a win for us. But what about the purchaser? How was it a win for him? What did he get out of it? Was he a satisfied customer? Was his purchase worthwhile? I mean, since that purchase was made, the day after, did the whole world change? Did it become a better place? Did people stop sinning or sin less than they did to the day, the, did the day before? Well, unfortunately, no, but it was still a win for God. Let me give you three reasons why it was still a win for God, or rather let God tell you how it was still a win for him in three different ways. First reason, Jesus tells us in Matthew, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. God gives us the opportunity to live Christian lives here on this earth so that others may see that and glorify our Maker. God allows us to do good things in life. He enables us to do good things in life so that that might point to the glory of God, a win for God. Reason number two, Peter says each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. He put this, puts us on this earth and gifts us to serve up his grace to the whole world, both believer and unbeliever alike. Another win. And reason number three, Paul tells us in Romans, And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And I'm not just talking Pastor Schrader and myself here, but God has entrusted this beautiful gospel message with everyone in this building. And it is beautiful to God when that beautiful gospel message of his is shared with lost souls here on this earth. Shock up another win for God. I know this guy who really enjoys taking advantage of a good deal now and then. He signs up for birthday clubs at local restaurants and when his birthday rolls around he enjoys getting a few freebie birthday meals. Free is always good. When you take your vehicle into the shop to get that $2,000 worth of repairs done that you just love doing, and your mechanic calls you and says, okay, your car is done, you go pick up your keys, and your mechanic says, 
might say to you, you know what? This one's on me. No charge. What a deal. When you open up your mail next week and you see that a, you received a letter from a long lost relative, you open it up and find out that he has gifted you his 4,000 square foot home overlooking the ocean in Southern California. Pure gift, just to you for free. No strings attached. Oh, if all great things in life would be free. Oh, wait. We did get the best thing in life for free. A savior from sin. A loving gift purchased by your Father in heaven. The next time you go out shopping, whether you make a big purchase or a small purchase, take the time to stop and say a quick thank you prayer to God for making the greatest purchase of all time. He purchased you with his son Jesus' own blood. It was a painful purchase, but a win for everybody. Amen. Please stand.